I would just sleep anywhere I could sleep for about a month. Philadelphia's future, invisible, forgotten. Now you're outside, sleeping outside of a door with nothing to cover you with, and it's, and it's cold outside, and the white, and the white is here to help. Part of a silent epidemic all around us. No, I didn't have anything. I was displaced. The city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, has left homeless kids out in the cold. Tonight, meet the young people who are fighting for a place to call home. I'm going to end up getting locked up. We're probably going to be probably getting killed. So, like, I got to do something. I got to get out of here. These are the faces of our homeless youth. Good evening, I'm Rosemary Connors. Right now, hundreds, maybe more, of Philadelphia's youth, most in their teens and early 20s, don't know where they'll sleep tonight. Some may stay in a place like this, others in abandoned homes. Some may end up walking the streets all night, just trying to stay awake, to stay safe. The problem of youth homelessness is one that most people don't know exists, but it is all around us. Walking by you on the street, sitting next to you on the subway, playing with your own children in your living room. NBC 10 spent two months investigating the epidemic in our area, interviewing more than two dozen people, experts, social workers, and 17 currently and formerly homeless youth. What we found was an incredibly underserved and unknown group of vulnerable kids who need your help. It's an issue that the experts tell us can be fixed so long as there's a will. As it turns out, our reporting is catching the attention of both lawmakers and people just like you who see that a solution is possible. NBC 10 digital reporters Morgan Zalot and Vince Latanzio embedded themselves on the streets of Philadelphia in some of the city's most dangerous neighborhoods. They also spent time in the only emergency shelter that specializes in serving these threatened kids. I'm sure it was an eye-opening experience. Tell us what you learned. Homeless kids are just like any other kids. They're all around the city, but they're hard to pick out. They go to school, they have cell phones, they goof off with their friends and take public transportation. That's why they call them the invisible homeless, because so few people realize how big of a problem it really is. For instance, on the night of a nationwide homeless count last year, nearly 200,000 youth up to age 24 did not have a place to call home. In Philadelphia, on the night of a count in January, more than 600 youth ages 18 to 24 were homeless. But once we got on the street and started meeting these kids, seeing how they survived and how they hid their plight from people every single day, we realized that that number was likely much higher. Take Sinquise Giddings, for example. The 19-year-old is super smart, well-spoken, resourceful. He took it upon himself to look up places to stay while he was homeless, and every day he still went to school. The night I left my mom in Wilmington, Delaware, I had to walk from Wilmington, Delaware here. How long is that? That uh, takes like an hour to drive. Uh, it was 11 hours, 11 hour walk. Oh my God. Zinquise goes by Q. He was effectively homeless for three months in the winter. He was 17 then. And like many other homeless kids, he left home because his family life was unbearable. Others are kicked out because of their sexual orientation. Some are abused or abandoned by their parents. And some young women are kicked out because they get pregnant. For Q, it was trouble with a family member. Oh yeah, he was physically abusive to my mom. I tried to stand up for her to me. And he was emotionally abusive. When he would be mad at her, she would be mad at everybody else. So it's like, I'm going out, Mom. I'll be back whenever. When Q left home, it was January. A few nights a week, he would sleep in parks like Independence Mall. I'm just wondering how I slept in the cold because I hate the cold. Like, I try to sit and wait for the bus stop, for the bus at the bus stop in the snow, and I just can't stand it. It's unbearable. So I'm like, how in God's name did I get to sleep on these nights? I'm like, I must be a lot stronger than I think. If something would happen, like my trans pass stopped working and the bus driver would let me on, I would just find the nearest park. I had a cell phone that it wasn't on, but it had Wi-Fi, so I would just like, where's the nearest park, you know? If I liked the park, if it was nice, I would stay there. If not, I would walk somewhere else. Other times, he would sneak into his great-grandmother's old apartment building in North Philly and try to sleep on a couch in the lobby. He had lived there for years until his great-grandmother passed away. I felt safe here. It was where I grew up. It reminded me of like the past when everything was like simple. Things aren't, things just like stop being simple. 
Hugh was on the cusp of the age where getting help becomes immensely more complicated. At 18, in the eyes of the law and social services, you're an adult. That means going to adult shelters with the chronically homeless. People who have been on the streets for years, some with serious mental health issues. For a kid, that's scary. When we decided to put faces to this problem, we didn't know who we were going to come in contact with. We met young mothers, college students, those who are battling addiction, and others who spent time in jail. But what they all had in common is they were all clawing their way out of this ravine that they've been living in. But it's a tough climb. Yeah, I like to think that I chose to not stay in that environment and go somewhere else. But I don't think anyone deserves to be homeless. Next, we'll take you to the streets to see the world through the eyes of the kids who have been there. At the time, I didn't see a future at all. And those who still are. It's like hell. If you or someone you know is homeless, call this number for help now. While most of us are getting ready for bed, the young people living on Philadelphia's streets are preparing for a nightly fight, sometimes a fight to stay alive. They scout out a place to rest, all the while worrying about protecting themselves from the elements and trying to stay out of harm's way. Sleep may be a necessity, but for these kids, it's not easy to come by. Back up across the street. You really get sleep? No, you can't never get sleep out here. You know, the trains always come in, the cars. People always try to bother you, and the cops always try to wake you up, tell you to move. Raphael is 19. We met him in August at D and Cambria in Kensington, one of the most violent drug corners in Philadelphia. He said he'd been on the streets for three months since a fight at home left him without a place to stay. I've just been jumping from house to house, sometimes stay in the street or in the park, you feel me? So yeah. It's really no home, we have no way place to go. He stays in the neighborhood because he feels that he has no other place to turn. He says that he grew up with some of the drug dealers and they sometimes give him money for food. I'm gonna end up getting locked up. We'll probably be probably getting killed. Like, I got something. I gotta get out of here. We published Raphael's story on NBC10.com last month as part of our series on homeless youth. A social worker saw it and reached out to him to offer help. But sometimes, even when help is there, kids don't trust the system. Like Walter, the 20-year-old from Philly's Feltonville section who we met on our first overnight on the street. He was in Love Park surrounded by other homeless people, many a lot older than he is. It's been about a year on and off, a little longer than that because I, I was in a um, transitional housing program. Walter wound up on the street after being released from prison. He said he didn't want to be homeless, and even though outreach workers were trying to send him to an adult shelter, he wouldn't go. I don't really like being in the shelters because it's like, I don't know, it's like, you know, it's understanding it's hairy and, and like, I don't really like sleeping around understanding it's hairy things. Some kids wind up on the streets chasing a drug addiction, doing things they never imagined they'd do to survive. That's the case for Sierra from Ardmore. She's in her 20s and she's been on the streets since late last year. How do you get by out here? Like, how do you get food, like, money? They show on dates or like, I just, I like just started that. But like, I like try not, that's like my last resort. It's like hell. We met kids who stay in a bandos. That's what they call abandoned houses. Some neighbors say they watch a steady stream of kids, some as young as 15, going into these houses. And others, they stay in a train trench. It's a wooded area littered with trash, human feces, and used needles all over the ground. There's another one over there, they're everywhere. And they all have like the points on them. This trench runs for about a half mile next to freight train tracks on the edge of Kensington. On one end, there's a homeless encampment near a bridge. During the day, it's a little bit safer. At night, people will be down there waiting for you. They'll bust you upside your head and take your stuff. We went at dusk one night and found shacks made out of wooden pallets. You know, they got to go one 
makeshift bed. I mean, they're definitely creative. Sometimes, people sleep under a bridge around the trash. Regardless of what led them to the streets, the future is something that's hard for many of these young adults to see. Five seconds. At the time, I was really living day by day, hour by hour. I didn't, I didn't see a future at all. Joseph is 22 and from Mount Airy. He was kicked out by his mom for dealing drugs as a teenager. He's since found the right path, but he remembers those hopeless days. They only boiled down to two things, death or, or jail. So I was really living life kind of reckless. Coming out of prison to nothing is tough. Ginson, who came to Delaware County from Haiti when he was nine, learned that firsthand. He spent two years in prison on a burglary charge for breaking into a house to do his laundry. Incarceration asked that I needed somewhere to stay, a house to go to. But since my dad did not approve me coming back to, to my house, to back, back home, so I had, since I could have nowhere to stay, they said you had to sit the rest of the, the rest of the extra 19 months if you don't find a, if you don't find a place to live. When he did get out, he had no place to go. It was April, but still cold. So he slept outside his dad's apartment complex. I, I knew that I was coming home, that I couldn't, that I was coming home to nothing. Uh, but I didn't know that I was really coming home to be living in a situation like that. But as I realized, I'm like, wow, then this is uh, this how you know that you really messed your life up by just doing one thing that look where you are now. You were in a house sleeping, but now you're outside, sleeping outside of a door with nothing to cover you with, and it's, and it's cold outside. You can't, and the wife, and the wife is here to help. You're willing to help. We met so many resilient, tough kids. Emma, a 24 year old who moved to Southwest Philly from Sierra Leone as a child, said she was suicidal after spending three years without a home. Her breaking point was the night she rode the L from end to end for as long as she could. Doors are closing. I was riding the sub back and forth. I felt alone, like I didn't have nobody. I was suicidal. I was really suicidal. I didn't feel love at all. There are people trying to pull these kids out of this life and get them back on the right track, but they can't do it alone. You need federal, state, and local leadership to say we will not tolerate youth homelessness. Next, the fight to end youth homelessness and what you can do to help. Those who work with homeless youth often refer to them as invisible. That's because kids are embarrassed by the label. They say, that's not me. Yeah, kids who hop from house to house, couch to couch, with no real home, they tend not to view themselves as homeless. The label doesn't really matter. The fact is, is that there's a whole group of individuals who are at an age um, where they used to be thought of as adults, and now they're something that's not quite adult yet. Dr. Lawrence Steinberg wrote a book about the unique qualities of the adolescent brain. He says those qualities help explain why the system is not set up to support this homeless population. Because the brain is still immature at this age, certain skills haven't come fully online yet either. So the decision making and judgment capabilities of people in their early 20s are not fully adult yet. For homeless kids who fall into this group between 18 and 24 years old, options are limited. Technically, they're adults, but in many cases, they are not ready for the adult system. The city of Philadelphia has made tremendous, remarkable, inspiring progress ending chronic adult homelessness and entering veteran homelessness. But unfortunately, the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, has left homeless kids out in the cold. There is only one crisis shelter called Covenant House that specializes in serving only 18 to 21 year olds, offering them a place to stay, food, and health services. The only problem is there are way more kids that need help than Covenant House can serve. Today, we will turn a young person away from this shelter. We will turn a young person away and say, I'm sorry, I don't have a bed to serve you. Zinquis was one of those kids. He was 17 when he first walked into the Germantown-based crisis shelter. 
He was too young, so he couldn't stay, and he wound up back on the streets. He waited until his 18th birthday, and on that day, he walked back into Covenant House. Luckily, they had a bed for him. It was like a family, like a real family. Never really experienced that. So it's a, it's a good change of pace. Every month, on average, we turn away 30 homeless teenagers from our doors. 30. That's 360 a year. And of those 30 each month, we're turning away 15 young mothers and babies. I can catch it. Yep, we sure can. We need to do more, much more. In Philadelphia, there are about 140 beds available specifically for this group. That's according to the city's Office of Supportive Housing. Already squeezed for space, Covenant House reserves four beds for new mothers and their young or newborn children, plus one other bed for expecting moms. Lord, you've been so good to me. Angela, an 18-year-old from Philly's Germantown neighborhood, and her four-year-old daughter, Nevea, spend their nights in one of those beds. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I am. The hardest part for me was to bring my daughter here. I didn't really have a choice to bring her here, but that was the hardest part. Like, I have a little child in a homeless shelter. Would you, would you want to train? In addition to providing a place to stay, Covenant House offers training in life skills, like how to apply for a job, how to go on an interview. Both Ginson and Emma found refuge at Covenant House. It's been lovely here because I have somewhere to sleep. I come home every time. I, I know I'm coming home to a place where I can lay my head at. I was displeased, but now I'm not because mm -hmm. I have a roof over my head. I really feel blessed. Me being able to have things on my own. There's an immediate need for more resources for homeless youth, and officials and experts say collaboration is key. Marina Hikian is the head of Philadelphia's Office of Supportive Housing. Why is it important to focus on this particular population of homeless people? We've said it a million times that youth are who we, are, who we will be. The need outweighs the resource. You've got to have enough resources of where people can go. You need heavy duty at the top, federal, state and local leadership to say we will not tolerate youth homelessness just like we have said we will not have any more of our veterans homeless same principle the federal government's push to end veteran homelessness has led to major strides in philadelphia there had been more than 400 but at last count there were fewer than 40 veterans still living on the city's streets the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has goals to end veteran homelessness this year. Chronic adult homelessness by 2017 and homelessness among youth and families by the end of this decade. But Jane Vincent, the regional administrator for HUD, says that doesn't mean they're not paying attention to everyone every year. Those deadlines do not mean that we are ignoring those populations between now and 2019. Uh, it means that we are working on all of the populations at the same time and that we recognize that some are either larger issues or have uh, need more services or more systems put in place. At least one of our lawmakers is taking action. Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania is pushing for $40 million in new federal funding for transitional and permanent housing for homeless youth. But this is a matter of basic justice justice for the homeless, but also, in a very particular way, justice for the homeless who happen to be young people. Ending youth homelessness is within our reach, and the experts say everyone has a role to play. If you're a cook, come out and teach a class. If you're uh, you know, great with money, come out and teach basic financial literacy. Send a message. All of that sends a message to our young people that you care. The business and corporate community really needs to come to the table as a partner because this is their workforce. And young people need a shot at being able to build a life for themselves. Vincent Morgan, you both saw what's really possible. We have. So many of the kids that we interviewed put themselves on the right path to a solid future. Zinquis just started college at LaSalle University. He's living in a dorm now, excited about college life. I'm still getting into the groove of like getting up every morning, but it's going good, meeting new people. 
and it's just a new experience. Emma is mom to an adorable three-year-old girl. They have their own apartment, and Emma is working at a nursing home. When you have your own place, you don't have to depend on nobody, and you have a job, believe me, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling. Ray, Angela is working towards securing an apartment for her and her daughter. She loves singing. She even tried out for American Idol this summer. She finds strength in music and sings with the community choir. I'm grateful. I try not to complain. I'm just glad that I'm here and I can be a great mom to my daughter and that's basically all I want and I'm glad. Joseph is working at a program where he mentors young men just a little younger than he is helping them get their high school diplomas. And he's working at a coffee shop that employs former foster care youth emceeing their events. I've been homeless for about three years. I feel like I'm coming to the end of the road, end of this road. So I've, I've definitely made some progress. Ginson found a passion in cooking and he's being mentored by his executive chef. I wanted to be a chef my entire life and I'm thankful that I got the opportunity now. And I'm learned that what I did in the past is not affecting me in the future. We look forward to hearing more success stories like these. You can see more of our in-depth coverage on the faces of homeless youth right now on NBC10.com and the NBC10 app. There you'll find news stories that we haven't shared tonight, like the shocking number of college students who are homeless. Plus, meet all of the young people we spoke with and hear, in their own words, what it was like surviving on the streets and struggling to find a home. You'll also find a set of links, phone numbers, and resources for those on the verge of or currently experiencing homelessness, plus how you can get involved in helping to tackle this issue. If you or someone you know is currently homeless, call this number for immediate help. For Morgan, Vince, and all of us here at NBC10, I'm Rosemary Connors. We thank you for joining us.